Welcome back to another Bench Brothers Talk About, or whatever I'm calling this series. Careers in Science, and I wrote proper notes on my Bowie magazine. And let's just jump into it. So, Careers in Science starts with a vintage Ventec film, playing and showing you all of the wonders of the mighty Gargantua One. A space station so advanced, so self-sufficient, that it has been dubbed the ninth wonder of the world. Here, you and over 2,000 other employees, including 200 space welders, 74 flying nurses, and one busy barber, labor to make the boss's perfect vision a perfect reality. Which, I have to agree with Rusty on this one, is a stupid name for a space station. Gargantua One! It's like the worst name for a space station. I thought it cool. And also, it's a pretty stupid looking space station. But, the film continues, and we get to listen to what I think is our first uh, knowledge of Jonas Venter Senior. I guess I don't need to call him Senior at this point. He's the only one on the show. Meet your new boss, Dr. Jonas Venter, famed inventor, philanthropist, and globetrotting adventurer. Now enter your new office, Gargantua One. Uh, we get this wonderful clip of him talking about himself. And he shows up later in the episode and is very on point. But the ninth wonder of the world, Gargantua 2, Gargantua 1. Cool, we see a cute shot of baby Rusty and then it turns into a... Uh... Why even little Rusty? Dr. Venture's companion and son is pitching in. Well, this sort of drug addicted mess and uh, it's fine. We all love him. He might not be a Jonas, but he is a lovable little boy. Started it? No, I started it years ago in a moment of passion, and I'll end it the same way, right here, in front of Brock, Helper, and God. Now sit on your hands and keep your mouths shut. Man, as an adult, ah, he's all right. Let me see Rusty and the boys with Brock driving, heading up to Gargantua One. Control 2, this is Control. Maintain present course and enjoy the view. And may I state what an honor it is to have the illustrious Dr. Venture at the... Um... And the boys, well, they're being boys. They're wobbling in the bank seats. And we have a, a reasonably entertaining moment where Rusty friends them. And, you know, it's a... Knowing what we know now does make me a little bit concerned that Rusty might have just shot those boys out of the airlock. He does seem like a bit of a menace. Knock it off! Knock it off! Knock it off! Boys, for the last time, stop! Brock is trying to drive! I'm cool. And we also, just before they arrive, get a wonderful little helper moment where he tries to wipe off Dean's internal vomit. Oh, I love helper. But. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you this now. I think I know, after rewatching the episode, who committed the movie night massacre. And I'll reveal it throughout this maybe back to the notes quick comparison shot of gargantua 1 and gargantua 2 do they look that different which one looks sexier put it in the comments right that's what i'm supposed to do here and then we get a great season one brock moment brock in season one is a sexy murder machine and what moment is it it's a sexy one do you want this hot rocket wow that's a big one now, ease it in. Good. There is no way Brock doesn't know what he's doing as he slowly drives his spaceship deep, deep, deep into Gargantua One's holes. God, I might have to cut that bit. That's it. Keep going. Slow. Slow. Yes. That's it. That's a tight fit. It's like they were made for each other. Yes, because they were, because they were both made by the same guy. Now can we finish this up, please? I'm almost there. 
Brace yourself, because it's going to be... Um, and then we get introduced to Bud Manstrong, who, I've said it before, I think he might be Scare Bear. Dr. Venture, I presume. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> That's my man, Brock. Uh, okay. We don't know what happens to him when he goes back to Earth, and this show is very good at keeping their characters doing things, so... I'm just throwing it out there. I'm calling him Scare Bear. But he finds Rusty underwhelming, as does pretty much everyone who meets Rusty, and understandably so. This is quite an honor, Dr. Venture. I'm Colonel Bud Manstrong, and this vision is Anna Ball... I mean, Lieutenant Ball... Great, look, is there some kind of... What, the 12-foot godman that was his father? And then you got... Well, that doesn't really compare, does it? <laughs> we learn about Bun Manstrong's sort of incapability to address adult subjects because of trauma, which is understandable. He is a struggled... He is a broken character. He makes a bad toilet joke. Or... To unpack your uh, extra... Um liquid all right fine let's just get going or weirdo toilet reference bun man strong talks about his past as a paper boy on gargantua one the night of the the night of the movie night massacre i always remember back when i was a paper boy on this station i must have been about your age and on a night just like this one of the crew just suddenly cracked cool he gathered everyone in the hangar for what he called movie night and you know what bud says he says one of the crew members cracked we straight sent off straight up alarm bells in my mind if it was a crew member that means it's probably not one of the crew members that flew up or pretended to be crew members and flew up on the night which really puts it down to either being Bud Manstrong, or could the Movie Night Massacre have been done by Helper? I don't know if he was on the ship that day. I don't know what he was doing, but he's a crew member. He was built by Jonas. He's intelligent. I don't know if Helper's a killer. He does. He does have weapons, though. More investigation as this series continues, but I'm calling it Helper Movie Night Massacre. And then we get introduced to the problem, or as we now know, the problem, the Progressive Biological Life Extension Module. And it's on. So what's the problem? The light went on. Oh, that's helpful. And that's never happened before. Which is scary for us at this point, but we know. Now we know the f***ing hell it's jonas jonas has turned that light on he's inside that box and then what does dog do in his first encounter with his father in oh i don't know 30 years he pisses himself doc you okay yeah i'm fine yeah i was just enjoying the super freedom of space travel <laughs> you know testing out the waste collection pouch <sighs> it really is quite liberating <sighs> doc you try so hard, but you are never going to live up to your dad. Bud Man from the Lieutenant talk about their six years spent on the space station alone. Which, ooh, I can't imagine how, what the Lieutenant's going through. Bud does not seem like the best person to be with for a long period of time. I think I may be ready to... I mean, I don't want to rush you into anything. Rush me? We've been alone on this station for six years. Six years of hand-holding. Six years of kisses on cheek, of love notes in locker, of I heart Anna with that little TLA thing drawn on space boot with Sharpie. And Rusty tries to kill Brock. Boop, he opens the bay doors. Brock is sent flying out into space. No, now. <laughs> Which is not a good place to be in. We know that being sucked out those cargo bay doors is normally fatal. Jonas died from it. All of the crew died from it. And even some top level villains died from it. 
but none of those people got shit on Brock. He slowly crawls his way back in. You won't get off this easy, Brock Samson. He's fine. You know, maybe he coughed up something uh, pink and kiwi size, but uh, who cares? Oh yeah, the pain. That's not so bad. I hacked up some blood a couple of minutes ago and there was this pink chunk about the size of uh, one of those little kiwi fruit, but I don't feel anything missing, so I'm not... And once Brock makes it back on and Rusty closes the cargo bay doors, the problem is awoken. Blinking, blinking. It's on! It's off! It's on! It's off! It's on! It's off! It's on! Off! It's on! It's off! It's on! Off! It's on! That's called blinking, boys! And uh, on a rewatch, that is more code for SOS. Really, Rusty, you should have taught those boys better. But maybe it's not Rusty's fault. Maybe his dad should have taught him better as we watch Rusty then knock himself out on a control panel by turning the gravity back on. Yeah. Great design, Dad. What a super place for the gravity button. Uh, definitely not the most impressive scientist, is he? We learn that even space and literally the infinite void of the universe cannot kill Brock Samson. On him, he should be dead. Phantom spaceman. Because of course it can't. No one can. Uh, and then we see the boys actually quite sad about the potential death of their dad. Though Hank still kicks his corpse twice, so we might still have some feelings of resentment building up. Wait! Is he dead? Can't tell. Touch his neck. You? No, I don't wanna. Holy crap, I think he's really dead! Why would a Phantom Spaceman guy do this? Jonas Venture as a ghost? As an apparition? Or was this part of the problem? Maybe some form of hologram? Savages mean business. Now grab my hand and hold on tight. Oh, of course. Am I a ghost? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Who knows? Uh, not us, that's for sure. Not Doc, that's for sure. Probably Jonas, but uh, he's not really in a good position at the moment. As in, I think the OSI is experimenting on his brain as we speak. Hank and Dean set out across the spaceship to find out who or what is the Phantom Spaceman. And it looks like he's wrestling someone! Shove over! Phantom Spaceman! Um, Hank slaps Giant Boy Detective out of Dean's hand. They ain't doing this like the old days. They are investigating proper and true. Giant Boy Detective do! Screw Giant Boy Detective! His dad's not dead! And we have a couple of cut betweens of Rusty talking to his father and the boys investigating until they stumble across Brock Samson fighting the Phantom Spaceman. That's it, Brock! Peace yourself! Conserve your energy! What the? What is he doing with his. Think about it, bro! What other weapon does he have? And, my lord, I forgot how long that scene was. Brock is not a quick finish. That's for sure. That's for sure, for sure. You know. Hopefully that didn't make it through their uh, recloning process, because that one might have been a bit of a mess. Hank especially spent a little bit too much time watching his hero and mentor uh, having sex with a space ghost. Brock's just toying with him! Oh, pretzel bender! Brock's gotta teach me that one! Phantom Space Man got his helmet knocked off! Oh my god, he's hideous! Oh, oh, must have been deformed by space rays! Rusty finds his pills, removes his father's hallucination, so it probably wasn't a hologram. All you have to do is... Hi, Dad. But also, it could just be the dodginess of the... problem, because it, you know, it's been 30 years. A helper manages to get back aboard the spaceship, unfortunately... <laughs> He has to deal with Hank and Dean, probably their most violent, well, not Hank's most violent, but definitely Dean's, as they beat up Helper and send him skyrocketing back towards the planet Earth. Big fat jerk! Brock! 
Brock and Bud Mantron go outside to fix the uh, entry point helper maid. And they have a reasonably civil conversation. Well, at least Bud does. Until he makes one mistake. I was going to say fatal, but I guess it wasn't. He lays a hand on Brock Sansa. If you harm a hair on her sweet little head, I will... No, wait! How inappropriate! Now go mood! Mood! Wait, stop! No, no! And he gets his ass handed to him. Bam, bam, bam. And Rusty, seeing the whole breach, whole breach fixed, uh, removes the tiny plastic toy he left in the spaceship years ago, and the light goes off. Maybe he's done it. takes off his pissy uniform and uh oh he just leaves it on the control panel rusty 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 you know let's pretend he didn't send a billion dollar possibly more spaceship hurtling towards the planet and we see the probe I'm blinking SOS one last time as Rusty Brock Dean as Rusty Brock Dean and Hank head back to uh back to the venture compound and get ready for episode three. Right. Yeah. See Baskowitch take off her helmet. Ooh, she ugly. Bathroom, you could... Oh. Yeah. Of course, how insensitive of me. You've had a long journey, and I'm sure you need... And there's a lot of weird... Note to self. How many weird toilet references are there in this show? Does anybody refer to a number one or a number two in a normal way? Because I know 21 doesn't, and the Monarch doesn't, and Bud Manstrong doesn't. Note to self.